you're watching us here on this very, very special conversation on CNBC TV 18. I call it special because it's the first time Promeet Kosh of Trompton Consumer has decided to speak to all of us in the media after investors being so excited about the prospects that he brings to the company. Thanks a lot, Promeet, for joining in. Um, My pleasure. A little over six quarters, almost six quarters since you took over. Let's, let's turn the clock back and ask you, you know, what, when you joined, was top on your to-do list and how far have you gotten there? Yeah, it's an interesting question. Uh, I'd obviously been involved with the company for several years. And there was one element of my uh, conversation that has remained constant uh, over these more than <laughs> decade, its potential. Got it. And uh, I felt then, uh, as I felt before I took over the CEO, that there's incredible potential in Crompton. And uh, it was my job to help us, uh, and by that I mean the employees, the consumers, and the uh, shareholders realize that potential. When you always felt that there was potential, what was it that was lacking for the company to have realized that potential, and what is it that it needs now to go ahead and realize that potential? We have an incredibly strong brand. Right. Right? That's right. How many brands have the felicity of generations of consumers having trust in it? How many brands are practically sold in every nook and cranny of the country? We have, we, our products are sold in like three like outlets right. uh, in a year. Uh, so there's still a lot more that we can do. There is, we have leadership positions in many of our products, but we believe that we can further increase our positions in those so let's, segments. Let's, let's spin you down to that. And, and in <laughs> <Go> new <ahead>. segments. <laughs> yeah, yeah, tell me. So, you know, uh, you said that you have a vision for transforming that country. Yes. If you could put a number to that in terms of revenues, in terms of product mix, in terms of market share, in terms of margins, when those quantitative parameters are achieved, you can call it a transformed company. Uh, so what are some of the things that we are looking to do? Uh, we have, like I said, uh, you know, a market, a market in which we are market leaders in many products, but the beauty is that there are wide spaces in the products in which we are market leaders. How often does that happen, right? I mean, you know, for instance, in fans, uh, we are market leaders by a significant margin. What's the market share, the latest market share? Uh, yeah, so, you know, uh, it I depends on how you count. Yeah, maybe order of magnitude 27, 28%. Uh, but despite that, uh, we have a markedly less uh, market share in premium fans. Right. right? Uh, frankly, no reason for that uh, uh, to happen. And therefore, the opportunity for us exists to build on that segment. Uh, and that's a pretty important segment in every premium, day. premium, you said, was almost 20, 15 to 20% of yes, the sales? Yes, and growing by the day, and growing by the day. So we, we can uh, uh, obviously increase our uh, share there. What would the delta be? I mean, if, say, the fan category was to grow at X, how much is Crompton aspiring to grow at? And in Crompton itself, how much is premium aspiring to grow at? I would get into specific numbers, but like I said, uh, you know, there isn't a good reason for us over the next several years uh, not to have a 30% plus uh, share in fans, right? Uh, similarly, in pumps, uh, we have, again, a similar share in residential pumps, uh, and we are market leaders by a long distance. Uh, we don't have nearly the same share in agricultural pumps, in industrial pumps, right? Uh, we also don't have that share in solar pumps. And as you've seen, as we've gathered uh, some more share in those businesses, that's lend heft to our business, and potentially, again, uh, going forward, we'll have much larger share, I hope, apart from getting into adjacencies because right. our products, uh, you know, are not only well recognized, the band is as strong as it is, that it's possible for us, and we've demonstrated it in a few areas, right. it's quite possible for us to get into uh, and build leadership positions uh, in newer categories. You've spoken about, you know, mid-teen sort of growth 
for the future with two to three percent at least coming in from adjacency yes. so we'll, we'll we'll talk about that in just yeah. a bit but you alluded to solar and you know b2b pumps or agri pumps as well yes. what is the total addressable market here and what's your aspirational market share here uh, so you know order of magnitude i'd say that the solar market that we could potentially address is 2,500 to 3,000 crores, and that's much, much larger than we currently sell. What's your aspirational revenue from this vertical over the next, say, four or five years as this business scales up? Uh, rather than put a number to it today, I'd say today we have two, three, four uh, percent of the market, and no, no good reason for us uh, not to be uh, materially, materially higher than where we are today. Double digit right. mid-teens? Yeah, I mean, you know, close to double digits. If I just had to back calculate your aspiration versus the market itself, it would mean a 10x growth from the last quarter numbers, at least in the solar uh, business. There's certainly a lot of potential in solar pumps. All right. And, and, and you know, and might I add, uh, at, le at least so far our experience there has been that you can make money and you can get good cash flows when you play it right. And what about industrial and agri? You did say that, you know, you have almost a third of the market in the residential pumps. Yes. How has it been navigating the industrial and agri pumps? Margins, are, are they different? And how, how is that business uh, going for you? Actually, they're doing quite well for us. Uh, initially, we believed that that business, we would have uh, lower margins. Uh, and, uh, I, you know, once we've gotten into it, turns out <laughs> uh, if when you get scale, uh, uh, the margins converge. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I have to say positively surprised on that. Not only our selling channel, but our servicing channel. Right. Uh, you must remember uh, servicing is really important for all our products, right? If your pump doesn't work one day, you need then uh, let's be clear, if it's a residential pump, that family doesn't get drinking water that day, right? That's right. If it's an agri pump, uh, uh, you know, uh, standing crops don't get <laughs> irrigated. So, you know, our products are, uh, you know, mean a lot to people's lives. And that's why they want to go with a, a brand that they trust. And, you know, we found that we can leverage the strengths we have uh, uh, also to get better at, uh, to capture market share in the segments that we are on. So if you could give us a split in your pump business as to how much comes in from agri, how much comes in from industrial, how much comes in from residential, and how is that mix likely to change over the years? Uh, because we don't disclose this. Uh, uh, I'd say roughly about order of magnitude, 80% of our uh, sales come from um, RECI and the balance comes from agri, uh, industrial, and speciality and solar. And it would be aspirational for someone like you to have at least an equal split between RECI and the other. Perhaps equal, but you know, close to equal, whatever. I mean, you know, certainly uh, we do expect this segment and it has already been growing faster, obviously, from uh, uh, RECI. Uh, we certainly expect this to outpace, continue to outpace the RECI segment. From a skill set standpoint, I, I, I was looking at your background, you know, um, you've, you've been in the investment space for almost a quarter of a century. What do you think is the skill set that you bring over and above everyone else in the team that they have for running a successful business like Crompton Consumer Electronics? To give you a little bit of context, uh, I initially spent, uh, uh, you know, nearly two decades as a um, M&A banker. Right. Uh, we helped transform the cement industry, which was consolidating at that time. Right. Right. And that happened, I think, not simply because we, uh, you know, gave good advice, but we managed, I think, to both zoom in and zoom out. So understand the big picture, but also what would make it work, because these are large transactions. And that's why people kind of came back to us time after time after time, right? Uh, so that zooming in and zooming out having a perspective of where the business was going, also having a perspective of what you needed to do in order to get there, right? Because too often, if the two are, uh, uh, you know, disparate or unconnected, then it doesn't work out. You know, I, I would take the liberty of adding a third dimension to it as well. Yes. Since you have, uh, you know, a background in investment banking and uh, investing, so to say, 
you have an idea of where the business is going, you have an idea of where to take the business, but you also have an idea of where the value of that company is going as well, where you derive it from a third party angle as well. Uh, if, if you had to just, you know, analyze, say, Crompton Consumer from wearing your investor hat, how would you, you know, make a case for all the investors, right? Now? I say very often uh, uh, that our business has no entry barriers, right? right? None whatsoever. Every day there's someone uh, who's entering the business. The barriers are in sustaining. Barriers are being able to grow beyond a certain size. Barriers are to being able to turn out a profit, to uh, turning out strong cash flows. Now, what are the what are the reasons that you are able to do that? Is one scale. Not many companies touch 10 crore households every year. So that's I, I think we have scale. We have a brand which connects across generations. We have. A great go-to-market. Uh, uh, you know, we really have good people. Right. So, uh, uh, you know, we are trying to bolster that by investing further in things that we think will make a difference in the future. We're investing heavily in innovation. We spend, you know, close to, you know, a hundred crores every year. Uh, and by the way, you can do that because if you've got strong cash flows and scale, we are upgrading our um, uh, supply chain backbone. Uh, we are deeply embedding digitization into our uh, business. Uh, so, you know, there's, in short, you take the advantages that you have and you build on it further. Hopefully that uh, makes for a company that uh, will be valuable uh, for investors in the, uh, you know, in the years to come, increasingly valuable uh, for investors in the years to come. I don't want to speculate as to what that value might be because it's unfair for me to talk about that, but uh, there's value here. All right, Pramit, hold on to those thoughts. What I'll do is I'll request you to show me around this innovation center while we talk about the ECD business, Butterfly, and everything else that we have to talk about because you spend so much money. Might as well show it around. Okay, all right. <laughs> Let's do this. Test products, make products, uh, lab test them. The innovation lab. What exactly yes, happens out yes. here? What are so we seeing? This is this is the this is the frontal face of <laughs> <laughs> of our uh, uh, fans innovation lab. Uh, obviously, a whole bunch of stuff happens inside, uh, but yeah, this is this is where new products are developed. They are tested. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, ideas are generated and discarded. So. It's generating a lot of ideas in my head as well because you speak about the electronics uh, market, the consumer durables market. When we speak about fans, the obvious upgrade to a fan for an Indian is an air conditioner. Yes. Uh, are you guys looking at obvious upgrades to fans? There is coolers. Of course, you've done fairly well in the cooler market, growing 60-70% every quarter. Yeah. What's the, uh, you know, outlook on the cooler segment? And at the same time, the, the AC segment, have you considered that? Yes, I, you know, as you might imagine, we, we keep looking at adjacent season, coming up with plans to enter or <laughs> not to enter all the time. Uh, and uh, yeah, so uh, the thing with fans is that while, you know, there are other ways of uh, uh, cooling a home, fans are not going anywhere. Right. Right. Uh, Those who have ACs still have fans in their house. Still have fans. And in fact, you know, you need the fans for that cooling experience, right? And not only uh, are fans growing as a segment, but TPWs and personal fans are growing even faster, uh, apart from the fact that, you know, when we used to buy fans back in the day, 
uh, we would buy a fan and forget about it for the next 30 years. Uh, now the uh, life of fans is maybe seven, eight, nine years. That itself makes a big difference. A lot of your competitors, one of them in the very recent D2C sort of space, yeah. has made great waves in the fan industry itself. Mm -hmm. um, how do you look at competition in the fan space and also the cooler space which you've just entered? There are a couple of large players there already. Indeed. Indeed, because you you know you have to uh, obviously you know Crompton has its strengths, and as we continue to build our strengths, uh, I do believe that uh, you know we have a lot to do even in the fan segment itself, and you can potentially see uh, what we could do in the way that we've gained uh, market share in water heaters and geysers as well as in air coolers. All right, let's walk around and uh, let's go to some other parts of your office. Yeah, as well. I, yeah, uh, you know. Uh, it's very rare for us to, uh, you know, give people a glimpse of our uh, uh, labs, and I hope I don't get pulled up for it. But uh, <laughs> the company has no promoters. Who pulls you up? Well, I, the idea of a company which doesn't have promoters is to empower our people. You know, so there is no difference. The rules are not different for everybody, anybody else. No, but on a very serious note, for a company yeah. that does not have promoters yes. and, uh, you know, a leader that comes in from the PE world, the obvious thought that an investor would have or the stock market would have is that, is it a placeholder for someone else to go ahead and buy it? Yes. So what do you have to say to that? If I had to come into the company to sell the company, I didn't need to come in as the CEO to run the company, right? Right. There is... Uh, there's a lot that we can do with this company and that's the passion that brought me here and that's what I'm working towards. Equity-wise, what's your skin in the game, if I may ask you? Uh, yeah, come. I'll, uh, I have uh, ESOPs that have been granted to me uh, by the company and uh, ESOPs that uh, are marked at the price that when I joined. And we are, in fact, just in the midst of... Uh, going to shareholders with a, uh, you know, with an RSU scheme, uh, as well as an ESOP scheme. And the only person who's got ESOPs is me. All so right. as you can tell, uh, I'm heavily invested in the future <laughs> of this company. Let's get into the kitchen now. Yeah. You said uh, large appliances, which is yeah. roughly 14, 15 crore per quarter on a country. Are there any other white spaces in those large appliances that you're seeding? So large appliances, as we said, is one of those areas that we've got into. It's right. Hobbs and chimneys. Uh, it's Hobbs and chimneys. Let's not forget uh, uh, that a chimney really is a fan right. in a casing, right? And our, uh, nobody understands fans better than we do, right? which allows us to come up with fans, self-cleaning uh, chimneys, which are ahead of what the market was offering, right? Again, very much at the incipient stage. So fans, uh, coolers, geezers, all of them are multi-baggers, as they call it in the stock market, for you? I, I certainly believe that they are uh, uh, businesses where we will see uh, considerable growth uh, in differing uh, numbers. But um, you, you missed one more, which is uh, kitchen appliances. Yes. That's, that's a business uh, uh, that's been growing very well for us. And as we've said publicly, uh, it's been growing at a very uh, fast clip for Crompton, something that we've built only over the last three, four you years. You aspire to have 10% market share in the overall kitchen business. Where does it stand right now? Inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, where, where, where does it stand right now? And what's the so, uh, You know, uh, the kitchen appliances space, which is, you know, a 25, 30,000 crore yes. market, is a large space, right? Uh, so we, we do expect that that too will uh, contribute to the uh, growth of the overall company. Uh, butterfly Gandhi Mati. Yes. When you bought it, it was a what, thousand crore business. What exactly, uh, according to you, is a proper, settled, normalized, good run rate for Butterfly? What's your aspiration here? Because I'm looking at margin parity at some point with the overall business. And then perhaps uh, it crosses that. Because inherently, the nature of that business is that a margin on, say, what a Butterfly Gandhi Mati sells should be higher than, uh, you know, what, what, what you sell fans at. We bought Gandhimati and uh, especially over the last, uh, let's say, six, nine months, uh, we've done a fair amount at uh, a butterfly, you know, resetting how we go to the market, you know, the terms of trade with various parts, various channels, 
pricing, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, our expectation is that all of those will continue to show up in the, uh, you know, in the, both the revenues as well as the profits uh, of the company. Uh, so, you know, you, you'll see a, you, you'll see a trajectory of uh, uh, these improvements. So are we at an inflection point for that? The turning point for Butterfly uh, was probably uh, two quarters ago. And, uh, you know, we, we, we do believe that the business going forward uh, is going to be on a positive trajectory. Margin parity by when? <laughs> uh, uh, look, is that I, an aspiration? I, uh, Let's put it that way. Look, look actually, uh, uh, you may not, uh, I, I don't approach this from a margin parity perspective. Why shouldn't the business have better margins than other businesses? Job Industry right? leaders do mid-teens margin in that business. Uh, absolutely, right? So, so you know. Okay, why not? It. Why not? Right. All right. I, I'm being a little too hard on you when I keep asking you about margins, etc. Right. Obviously, revenue scale is extremely important. A large yeah. part of those savings go back into advertising as well. Something that you've been increasing over the last many quarters, we see it just under five percent as a proportion of your sales. Yes. Do you have an aspirational number here, or you will keep investing? Uh, the, you look. I, I don't think you will see percentages. Uh, uh, go up, so they'll, they'll be kind of in, the, in, in that, that ballpark, range, right? in that ballpark. Uh, but you know, we do intend to continue to invest in our branch because that uh, fact of the matter is, uh, you know, as we say, as we know, your future growth is in, is uh, uh, you know is being underpinned by the investments that you make. So yes. Are you making any more investments in investing, uh, increasing manufacturing capabilities? Because parts of uh, you know the street also think that by outsourcing manufacturing, you are probably um, you know shortchanging some of the margins that you have. Uh, is that a thought of yours? We are going to strengthen. Already, we are doing a lot uh, to strengthen our manufacturing backbone. Right. right. What That's... proportion of your sales currently come in from your own manufactured products? Uh, you know, about it varies from uh, uh, business to business. Uh, between uh, fifty and sixty percent comes from our own. Uh, uh, depend depending right. also on uh, uh, timing. So that does tend to change a little bit. But yes, the the point about uh, manufacturing is we are investing in our manufacturing in order to elevate our capabilities right. uh, because of what's coming down the pipe. Hmm. Right, because there's technology change happening in our businesses, and we want all obviously, needless to say, to be the leaders in that. Uh, so we are investing not only in manufacturing but in capturing a greater share of the value chain. So we will still have a share of our products which come from uh, outsourcing, but our own strength in manufacturing, in-house manufacturing, is something that we are building. All right, I'll uh, now ask you about a category and in one word you have to tell me what you think of that category okay, okay. all right um, okay air conditioners air conditioners is an adjacent area uh, but you know where are we going to enter it i cannot say right it depends on there are a whole bunch of areas that we are currently looking at washing right? machine uh, uh, less uh, uh, adjacent certainly air purifiers uh, again, uh, an adjacent category, one of the many that we'd consider. How high is that on your priority list? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's 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 all there. It's all there, <laughs> actively being thought about. <laughs> Prameet, before we wrap up, we're in 2024 right now. Crompton Consumer of 2028, what does it look like to you from a revenue and a profitability standpoint? Uh, well, it looks, the future looks bright. And uh, hopefully the journey that we are on on Crompton 2.0, uh, you know, at that time we start thinking about Crompton 3.0 and we'll have uh, hopefully better, uh, a larger market shares in businesses that we have uh, been uh, uh, incumbents in for years. Back of the envelope calculation suggests 20,000 crore revenue, 15% margins. Would that be a fair estimate or better than that? Who knows? <laughs> but uh, uh, well, you know, uh, 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 that's not that's an aspiration. Not, that's that's an aspiration. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so yeah. much for Thank you. letting us into your innovation lab, showing us around here, and being uh, you know so candid on television for the first time. Thank you. My pleasure.